Hi, this is a presentation on the distribution of sample means, otherwise known as DSM, and not Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, which is no, they're all together. So first, sampling procedure and error. Um, sampling procedure is a hypothetical or imaginary procedure where we select all possible samples from a population within a given sample size. So it's a it's a, almost like a thought procedure, but you can simulate data. Um, among all these possible samples, researchers work with only one of them in a particular study. Because as a researcher, you can only collect so many samples. Usually it's just one sample you have access to or can get, get a hold of, of all the possible samples that, that could exist. With that, there's a certain amount of error, otherwise known as sampling error, it's a natural discrepancy between a sample statistic and its corresponding population parameter. So there's always some amount of there's always some amount of error between the population parameter and the sample statistic, which is known as sampling error. However, we do not ever know for sure what amount of sampling error we get, uh, how much sampling error we have. We can estimate it and we can try to correct for it to have a more exact value of the population population parameter but this is basically why we use inferential statistics uh, because we don't have uh, population data a lot of the time you know it's lovely if you have it but you don't actually you're trying to infer to the population you're trying to make inferences to the population based upon your sample hence why we have the term inferential statistics so sampling distribution and means so in these multiple samples that you can derive from a sample, you can calculate various statistics. So the mean, which I'm sure you've heard of, standard deviation, which I'm probably sure you've heard of, um, as well as a measure of variability, and also in it's in the two previous, or there's two chapters on it. There's a chapter of measures, essential, measures essential tendency, and then a measures of variability chapter, um, and then range and percentage. All these can be calculated for these popular possible samples. Um, the sample mean is our primary statistic of interest and what I mean by that is most often our research questions look at mean differences between different groups or between a group across time or uh, looking at a group across time. So sample mean is our, prop, our primary statistic of interest. And within that we have a distribution of sample means which is a collection of the means of all possible samples generated from the sampling procedure. And this is the DSM. This term will come up a lot. U sub M, and when I say sub, that's subscript. U sub M, which is mean, as, as is the expected value as the expected value of the mean. Basically in the in the mean of the sample, the U sub M should be exactly the population mean that makes M as an unbiased parameter uh, unbiased statistic for its corresponding parameter. So U sub M is the mean of the sample mean. So if you were to theoretically or hypothetically pull all these different uh, samples from the population, U sub M is the mean of the sample mean. And across time, uh, it should be exactly the population mean, and which would make M the mean as an unbiased, param unbiased stati statistic for the parameter. So, um, the standard error describes the variability of a statistic across the various samples, while the standard deviation describes the variability among the individual scores. So, notice the distinction. The standard error describes the variability among individual scores, while the standard error describes the variability of a statistic across samples. Now, this all goes into what we call central limit theorem. So, what we're talking about is this theorem that... Um, in the long run, if you keep taking these different samples, um, that the mean of the samples, the U sub M, should approximate, should approximate the population mean, and therefore making the mean a, an unbiased parameter when you use uh, for the corresponding U when you um, use the standard error. And the standard error describes the variability of a statistic across various samples. And in standard deviation, we already know. So 
So basically, since the limit theorem is saying that the mu sub m should approximate the population mean, and knowing that across time, across these multiple samples in the long run, so knowing that, then we can use standard error to better approximate our mean for the samples because it will relate to the corresponding parameter mu. Now, central limit theorem is predicated upon the law of large numbers. So, um, you might remember from your scientific theory classes that you have um, theories, laws, it, there's laws and theories in science. Well, there's a law of large numbers which precedes the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem is a theory. So the law of large number precedes it and it says, the larger the sample n, the closer a sample mean to the population. So the larger your sample size, the more likely it's gonna approximate the population mean, which goes back to the central limit theorem because the central limit theorem then uses that, let me go back twice, to say that in the long run, so the mean of the sample mean um, should be exactly the population mean. So if you take all these different samples and get larger and larger samples, uh, more and more information, from these samples, which is larger and larger sample size, you should be able to have an unbiased um, parameter uh, or mu uh, and therefore be able to use your standard error to adjust for the mean and have an unbiased parameter all uh, statistic for to, cor to the corresponding parameter. So how do we differentiate these three distributions? Um, well, first, we have scores in the distribution. Uh, those are individual raw scores of the population. So um, that's the dis distribution of raw scores population. Then we have the distribution of scores in the selected samples. And then finally, we have the distribution of sample means. So looking just at the population column, so scores in the distribution, they're the individual raw scores. The symbol for the mean is the mu. And the symbol for the standard deviation is just the sigma. Now, for distribution of scores and a selected sample, meaning as a researcher, the sample you obtained, uh, well, first, the scores in the distribution are just individual scores selected in the sample. And the symbol for the mean is M italicized, and the standard deviation is the S italicized. Now, for the distribution of sample means, or the DSM, means of the sample um, are the scores in the di distribution and the symbol for the mean is the mu sub m and finally the symbol for the standard deviation is the sigma sub m or the standard error of the samples sample means so looking at this example we have a population of two four six eight so th that's the population um, so for this, the scores in the distribution are the individual raw scores of the population. The mean, or the, the mean is the mu equals five, because it's the population two, four, six, eight. Uh, then standard deviation is 2.24, and if you square that value, you get the variance, so sigma squared is a value of five. So looking at one of the samples from the population. So you, as a researcher, you obtain the sample values for two and four. These are individual scores selected in the sample. The mean of these scores is three, and the variance would be two, and the standard deviation would be 1.41. 1 well, looking at the distribution of sample means, we, let's say we, t we take 16 different sample means, so 16 different samples of 2, 4, 6, and 8. So the means of the samples um, in this case would be mu sub m would equal 5. Uh, uh, the sigma sub m squared, which is the, that's right, standard error, 2.5, and the standard error, um, well, unsquared, um, and then if you square it, it'd be 2.5, and so unsquared would be uh, 1.58.
So you see the different estimations of param of these values that are supposed to correspond to the, the true parameter. Okay. Well, that was a brief presentation on the distribution of sample means. Please contact me with any questions you may have.